Hey everyone, this is Android Cemetery here, and in part 5 of this video series, we're going to be finishing off texturing our crate in Substance Painter by modifying our materials, adding some emissive materials, and finishing off by adding some extra detail to the model. Okay, so now that we've applied all of our materials and separated them out for each individual object, uh, let's modify the materials and have it look a lot better. So starting with the base, so I actually want the material for the lid and for the bottom part to be different. So for that, I'm going to press Control D to duplicate it. I'm going to call this one top and this one bottom. So again, we're going to create a black mask for each of these. So I'm going to switch this one off and I'm just going to concentrate on this one. So top, right click, add a black mask. So now if we go into our polygon fill, instead of selecting the object mesh fill, we want to select polygon fill because we just want to select these top polygons. So the best way to do that is to go into front view. So while we're rotating, if we hold down shift, we can snap to each view. So if we rotate here, we'll snap to front. If we rotate like this, we'll snap to the top. We just want to rotate to the side. We also just want to go up here. Instead of perspective view, we want orthographic view. And now I just want to select this top part. I want to select a little bit of this just so we can easily get these top areas. And then I want to go up here and I want to remove this area here. So I'm going to go down to zero. And now if I go over it, it'll remove these areas, which is what we want. Okay, so now we pretty much want to do the exact same thing for the bottom part. So I'm going to turn this back on, right click, add a black mask. And also if your polygon fill is blacked out, just make sure that you're selecting the mask and not the fill layer here. So select the mask. We want polygon fill and we want to do the exact same thing. Make sure this is at one. Select the bottom part and just a bit of that part just so it's easier to select these areas. We want to rotate and hold down shift to snap to the front mode. I want to deselect these. I'm just going to go back to the top and remove these top parts as well. Okay, so I'm going to go back to perspective view. So if sometimes if you go back from orthographic to perspective, you might actually lose where your model is. Uh, just press F to focus. Okay, so now I'm just going to change the color of both of these. So the, for the top one, I'm going to select the layer. I'm going to go down in the folder. I'm going to change the metal to a slightly darker color. So I'm going to select metal. And right here, where it says base color, I'm going to select this box. I'm going to make it slightly darker. Something like this. And then I also want to go to my bottom and make sure that the metal is the same color. So I'm going to go to the bottom folder, select the metal, go to base color, and with the eyedropper tool, I'm going to click and drag to this metal over here. And now it's the same color. So now on the top, if I now go to paint and then go to base color, 
So I'm going to change it to a light blue, something like this. Feel free to change the colors to whichever ones you wish. But I'm going to go with something like this. And then for the bottom, I'm going to go into paint and change it to something dark. Something like this. Maybe just a little lighter. I'm also just going to go into the top. And I just want to lower some of the detail a bit. So I'm going to go into the rust, select this generator. And down here, under image inputs, where it says parameters balance, I'm going to lower it. I don't really want this much rust. So I'm just going to lower it. Something like this. And then I'm just going to go to the bottom and do the same thing. Go to rust, select the mask, select the generator, image inputs, and then I'm just going to lower the balance a bit. So when it comes to the latch, I'm not going to change it that much. I'm just going to select it, select paint color, and then maybe just make it slightly darker. Something like this. And that's all I'm really going to do to that one. Okay, so now I'm going to select my front handle. Open the folder. I'm going to select my leather. Open that folder. I'm going to go to leather base. And where it says color. I'm also going to make that something very dark. Something like... Something like this. Now there's a lot of worn out detail over here. I want to lower it a bit. So I'm going to go to leather worn. Select the mask, select the generator, and again, where it says image inputs, balance, I'm going to lower it, something like this. So now I'm going to select my steel, I'm going to open the folder, go down to base, and again, make colors just a little bit darker, not too much darker. So when it comes to the side handle, I want to darken the steel material and I actually want to use the same material that's being used here on these areas here. So I'm going to go into my base crate and select my bottom part, control D to duplicate and I'm going to select it and move it down and put it into side handle. So you can see that the mask also copied over. I just want to right click and clear the mask and just change the name to handle. So now I want to select the steel, right click, add a black mask. I'm already in polygon fill mode. I want to select mesh fill, make sure that's one, and select this area. Then I want to open the folder, go down to base, base color, and again just make it slightly darker, something like this. I want to close the steel. Now the material that we copied over, I want to select the mask and select this part. So now this part of the handle is now sharing the same material as, as this base part. There is quite a lot of rust on here though. So I want to go back into the folder, go into rust, select the mask, select the generator, and make sure that I lower the balance. Okay, so now we're gonna go to the back and modify the materials of the hinges. So go into hinges, steel. I'm gonna again just make it slightly darker. And something that I wanna do is I wanna add some height detail to actually make it look like proper hinges because at the moment it doesn't really look like hinges. So I'm gonna close that. I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add a fill layer, right click, and I'm gonna add a black mask. I'm going to go back into paint mode. I'm going to go down into my brushes and I'm going to select basic hard. I'm also just going to rename this and call it height. I'm going to press F1 to bring up the UV map. I'm just going to find out where it is. Okay, so just find where your UV map is for the hinge, this round area. So mine is over here. 
And for the moment, I don't want to add any color. I just want to add some height detail. So I'm going to go in the fill layer. I'm going to turn off color and pretty much everything else except for the height. I'm going to lower my height to something like negative 0.1. I'm going to go back into my mask. I'm going to lower my brush radius by holding down control and moving my mouse left and right. Make sure you're not going up and down because that actually changes the hardness. You can see the hardness changes if you hold down control and move the mouse up and down. We want the hardness to be 1. So to change the radius, control, move your mouse left and right. Something like here. Now you can see if we add the detail here, it's actually adding some on this area here, which we don't want. So we want to go down here where it says alignment and we want to select UV. So now it's only going to alter this UV. So I'm just going to lower my radius. So hold down control and moving the mouse left and right to something like this. I'm going to click up here and then hold down shift. Click again down here. I'm going to click up here, holding down shift to draw a straight line. Click down here. You can see now it looks a lot more like a hinge. You can even go back down to your layer settings and adjust the height. But I think negative 0.1 works well. So F2, and we're done with that area. So now I want to add a small decal at the top here. So I'm going to add another fill layer. I'm going to call it decal. Right click, add a black mask, and then on my shelf, I'm going to go down to alphas. I'm going to type in caution. And the one that we want is just this caution sign. So while I'm rotating, I'm going to hold down shift to snap to the top, making sure that I've got the mask selected, holding down control, moving the mouse left and right to enlarge the decal. And you can see when it comes to the alphas, the black areas don't show up. It's essentially just the white areas. So it is possible to actually create your own alphas and import them into Substance Painter. So I actually want to rotate this decal. So I'm going to hold down control, left click, and move up and down. Just going to move it something like this. I'm just going to stamp. I can see that it's a bit wobbly. And the reason why is we've got alignment on UV. If we control Z that, go to alignment, and if we change it to camera, the decal is going to be applied depending on where the camera is facing. So now if I rotate this again, control left click up and down, something like this. If I just stamp it down here, that works a lot better. Also feel free to change the color. If you want to change it to something like yellow or red. I'm just going to stick with white for the time being. So you can see that this decal is very clean. The rest of the model has a lot of edge wear and it's all pretty dirty. So we want to do the exact same thing for this caution decal. So if we select our mask, if we go down to our shelf, select our brushes, just type in the search bar, dirt. And if we select something like dirt one, you can see that our brush alpha has now changed and we can add these like stains around the model. Of course, we don't want to add stains. We actually want to remove it. So instead, I'm going to go down here to the grayscale from one, I'm going to move down to zero. And now if I left click and see that it actually removes parts of the caution sign and makes it look very old. I'm just going to click around here, remove some parts. Something like that, just a bit more. Yeah, something like that works, I think. Okay, so now the final part of our model, we want to add some emissive materials here. So I'm going to add another fill layer. I want to turn off all of these material parameters. So I only have color left, and I actually want to add an emissive channel. So right now, the channels that we have are base, height, roughness, metallic, and normal. So in texture set settings, near channels, I want to press the plus button, and I want to add an emissive channel. So you can see right now, I've got an emissive channel. I want to turn it on. I want to select this color, change it to something pink or purplish like this. I also want to change the color to something similar. So both the base color and the emissive are the same. I want to change the name of this to emissive. Right click, add a black mask. I'm going to select the black mask, go into polygon fill, and then select polygon fill up here. While I'm rotating, I want to hold down shift, and I want to go into orthographic view. 
and I want to select this area here. It's fine if these are selected because I'm going to move it. I'm going to move it into the base folder. So it's fine if you select those ones. So now that I've done that, I'm going to move this emissive into base crate. And because this base crate folder has a black mask with only the base crate, it's now removed from the latches. So now I'm going to go into perspective mode. Press F if we want to focus it. Go back into painting mode. And now I just want to add some detail to the side over here. And I want it to be on both sides, so I'm going to turn on symmetry at the top here. You can see there's a red line dividing it, and there's also a red dot mimicking what I'm doing on this side. So if I paint something on this side, it's going to happen on the other side too. You can change the settings up here. So right now it's mirroring on the x-axis. You can change it to the y. You can also change it on the z. So right now we want it on the x-axis. So now that I've got the symmetry on, I'm going to duplicate this emissive material. So select it, Control D to make a duplicate, and I want to clear this mask. So right click, clear mask. So the reason why I want to make a duplicate is because with this emissive, I actually want to add some height detail, and I don't want that to really mess with this one. So I can just change the name to emissive decal. So now I want to go to my alphas in the search bar. I want to just type in line, and I want to select the shape lines bending. I'm going to make sure my grayscale is 1. So I'm going to enlarge the decal, holding down control, right click, moving the mouse left and right to something like this. And I want it to fit in between the space. I'm going to hold down control, right click, and move up and down. And that'll change the length of the decal. I might actually make the decal slightly smaller. So control, right click, move the mouse left and right to something like this. And then control, right click, move up and down to something like this. So before I stamp, I want to go into the emissive layer. Turn on my height, and I want to make it negative 0.1. Go back into the mask, left click over here. Okay, cool. So I'm just going to move this emissive decal just right at the top then. And I'm going to turn off symmetry as well. So that's it for the texturing. Now it's time to export. So I'm going to go to the side here, texture set list. And right now it's just called default material. I want to change the name to sci-fi crate. Close that. So I'm going to go to File, Export Textures. I'm going to choose where it's going to export to. I've got my own folder for texture files. I'm going to select that folder. All of the other settings are all fine. And I'm going to export. So we're pretty much finished here. Next, we're going to be doing our final renders in Marmoset Toolbag 3. So now that we're finished creating our material and exporting it, we're ready to import our model and textures into Marmoset Toolbag where we can create our final render. <laughs> <laughs>